uh, as Bobby gets ready to uh, the message this morning, uh, I wanted to be able to uh, just thank him for making the time available. He was, sorry, <clears throat> he was called uh, on to uh, be able to fill a spot that, that came up and he was already, I was already talking to him about uh, being available late, late September, but uh, he stepped up to the plate and took care of and ready to come in this morning. But I read his book, uh, You Matter, It Doesn't, this summer when we were on vacation. And I just wanted to uh, let you guys know that you should go buy it. And it was fantastic. It, had, it was just jam-packed. Um, I don't think I've underlined, highlighted uh, more in any one book other than the Bible than, uh, than Bobby's book, uh, You Matter, It Doesn't. And I've started his second book, 10 Seconds. So he's a local guy here. Uh, I believe he lives. And uh, we're uh, just uh, blessed to have him with us this morning. And we really appreciate you, Bobby. So thanks for being here. I'm honored to be here, Bill, and everybody else. And it's good to see some familiar faces. And um, I'm going to continue. I shared a little when I came across to do the Bible study at the Gulf. Um, golf course um, location, and um, I'm just going to share so much of what God really had on my heart for everybody out there. But I want to throw out to every one of you, um, you know, we as Christians, and when we look at different denominations or um, people's different belief systems in Christianity, we always make this phrase. And sometimes I don't even think, and I'm not being rude or arrogant, I don't think some of us Christians really understand the depth of what I'm about to say. We make this phrase, um, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. And without me being arrogant, because I'm just talking about what God has been convicting me of and been working on my heart. Um, you know, I've been coming to the realization that what does that really look like? Because I think some of our preconceived ideas about what a relationship really is, uh, we get a little confused. So if you would, could you put on my man, Brian? I want to say hi to Brian for a moment. Um, if you guys could put What's Brian. Up, baby? How you doing, Bobby, baby? What's going on, partner? Happy Friday, kid. You all right? Yes, brother. Doing good. So I want to throw this out to you for a moment, Brian. Okay? Because I see a lot of your posts and I see pictures of you with your wife. So I want to ask you this very simple question because I'm going to open up with this and have you guys think about it for a moment after I share a few things and take a short break where you could write your own stuff down and your own ideas. But I want to ask you a very simple question, Brian, like I ask a lot of men around America, and that is this, because I want people to truly understand, as I'm understanding more than ever, the difference between religion and relationship. So here's a simple thing to you, Brian. From this moment forward, if you were never allowed to be with your wife in person, I'm not dealing with sexuality, just bear with me. I'm just dealing with everyday life, every moment life. You're not allowed to be with your wife in person, present in your life. The only way you can correspond with your wife is email, leave her a voicemail, or send her a text message. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. What type of relationship do you think you're going to have with your wife if you could never be with her in person, physically? How is that going to be? It's going to be very strained. Say that again? It will be very strained. It will be Say very it one more time. Say it strained. one more time. It will be very okay. strained. So when I preach and I share at different locations and I say this, and please excuse it, I'm just going to use, even in church, some of the phrases men have used. They said... I'm not going to have a very good relationship. Like Brian said, it's going to be strained. Excuse the word I'm about to use, but they would say my relationship would suck. This is what they have said. I'd have no kind of relationship. And here's the sad reality to me, I believe, with a lot of the church. And I'm not being disrespectful. When I read the Bible, when I read a Christian book, when I do a Bible study, when I listen to a sermon, literally, it's getting an email a voicemail or a text mail message from God the Father. Now, the only way that makes true sense and speaks to me, just like Brian, when you get any of those things from your wife, they make total sense 
because you have a relationship. You spend time with her in person. You are physical with her. And I'm not even dealing with the sexuality part. You're with her. You may be watching TV. You may be praying with her, reading the Bible together, going to a movie, going out to dinner. You get the picture. You're with her in person. The sad reality is I throw these words out to people because I'm learning this myself. The scriptures that radiate to me in the word of God, there's so many scriptures, but if I had to narrow it down, be still and know that I'm the Lord. Number two, if I am led by the spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If I sow in the spirit, I reap life. If I sow in the flesh, I reap corruption. But here's one of the biggest things. My sheep know my voice. And whether you heard me share this before or not, I ask people all the time, and I say to them, I say, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? And you know what I hear, Brian and everybody else? I hear one phrase, Jesus died for my sins. I said, absolutely, but I got to tell you, that's not the full gospel. I said, when I read in Luke and I read in Isaiah and I read through the gospels, Jesus not only died for my sins, he died for the root behind my sins, my heart condition. The word teaches very simply, out of the heart flows the issues of life. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. And the reality is, um, I have to plug into that. I have to understand that and know that um, out, of the, out of my heart flows those issues. So much comes from the heart. That's why Jesus even talked about it. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. I, you know, you may look at a man's outer appearance, but I look at his heart. In other words, you can ask him or her for what they do or don't do, but God looks at the heart and what's the driving force behind what they do and don't do. A few years ago, I do a lot of work with athletic groups, and I spoke to the Oakland Raiders before they played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And um, sitting in the audience is Derek Carr, who's a solid Christian. He's a quarterback. I always joke around, if I have a daughter, I'd love her to marry a guy like Derek Carr. Well, Derek Carr is sitting in the front row, and I say to Derek Carr, I say, Derek, when you run the tight end drag, that's a particular play, last man on the line of scrimmage is a tight end. I coached football for about 15 years. He released his cuts over the middle. Derek Carr would throw the ball high and wide. And I come to Derek Carr, and I say, Derek, is high and wide the problem? He goes, no, Bobby. It's not the problem. It's a symptom to a deeper problem. I go, bingo. I go, you know what we do in life? I'm not here ever to justify sin, wrong behavior. But I said, we go after people's behavior and don't help them understand the whys behind that behavior. What's the driving force of why they're going in that direction? Jesus understood that. That's why when he was on the earth, the people that Jesus argued with are the ones who say very simply to Jesus, they're arguing with him because Jesus and his mouth is what got him crucified. Because Jesus challenged all the religious, the condemning, the legalistic people of the time, judging those who are broken, those who are sinful, those who are hurt. And Jesus made it as clear as day. It's the broken. It's the sinful. It's the sick that need a physician. And I'm going to love on these people and bring healing to their heart and bring healing to their life and bring a change to the root behind where they're at in life. So as I'm saying this, as I talked to Derek Carr, the cool part was not because I'm a Bucks fan, but the reality is he threw for 535 yards that day and threw for four touchdowns, five touchdowns to beat the Buccaneers. But we got to spend a little time afterwards focusing on that reality. But here's one of the things that so many of us miss out on is number one, that which is hidden cannot be healed. Number two, okay, we really have to come to that understanding of what is the relationship with God look like? And in reality, to what does religion look like? Okay, what is my heart condition? What has happened in my life that maybe helps me in a good or bad way to look at myself, to look at others, to look at the world, to think about myself, to speak about myself, to speak about others, to have these perceptions? What is my heart condition? You know, and here's a simple reality I want you guys to please understand. God's been putting this on my heart. Because so many times I'll even hear preachers and people, and I'm not saying this judgmentally, they'll preach out of the Old Testament, and that's fine. But we got to remember one thing. David, Abraham, Noah, Isaac, Jacob, all the wonderful people of the Old Testament did not have one thing that we have. 
They did not have the Holy Spirit living in them. Because if the way the Old Testament was run and done, Jesus did not have to come. If it was a perfect system and a perfect way of doing things, God would have never sent his son. We would continue in that system. So here's what I want to say to everybody out there. If you have opened up your heart to Jesus Christ and asked him into your life, and you believe he's the Lord of your life, then guess what? The greatest power in the universe that raised Christ from the dead is living inside of you. Everything you and I need to be and live as a believer is in us. And you know, Brian, I see you working out and doing that type of stuff. And here's what I say to people all the time. You never go to a gym to find a muscle. You go to the gym to develop the muscle you already have. We as believers already have the muscle of the Holy Spirit living in us. It's learning how to access, activate, manifest, and practice his presence. So the one thing I throw out to people when we talk about relationship, before you ever open your Bible, read a Christian book, before you ever, ever, ever do a Bible study, even do things of God, find those moments first where you have that be still and know that I'm God time. You have that intimate time with God. So before I throw this out to you to take a moment for yourselves, I want to tell you about a bummer sheep if I, you've never heard this before. Maybe I shared it. Maybe I didn't I don't even remember. But let me tell you about a bummer sheep. Around the world, every once in a while, when a baby lamb is born to a mother sheep, the mother pushes and kicks the baby lamb away, wants nothing to do with it, rejects it. Whether you and I know our greatest fear in this world is the fear of rejection, not fitting in, not being loved, not feeling that we matter, not feeling that we're important or that we count. That's why Christ literally hung on the cross. I tell people all the time, when I take John 3, 16, it's simple. The message I've been speaking for 30 years is you matter to God. You matter so much to God that the only way he could fulfill what needs to be done to eradicate what Adam and Eve truly did was to send his son. So he sent his son on your behalf because you matter so much to him. He loves you dearly. He treasures you. Because guess what? If you and I did not have great value in the sight of God, why in the world would he give up his son to die for a piece of junk? Why would he give up his son to die for something that doesn't have value? Just like you and I, you're not going to go to the store and buy something that's not worth it and spend $200 on something that you think is only worth five bucks. That's why it took his blood. That's why it took his life because all the money, all the gold, the jewels, the rubies could not buy us. Well, here's the point I want to get back to, the bummer sheet. And that is this. The shepherd realizes the mother will not raise this baby lamb. He takes the bummer sheep. He takes the bummer lamb, brings it into his own house. Hear those words again. The shepherd takes it into his own house and raises it himself till the baby lamb comes to that place where it's now a baby sheep that he believes he could bring it back to his mother. Fellas, hear me carefully. When he brings it back to his mother, that baby lamb that is now received by its mother is literally, hear the words I'm going to say and let this radiate in your life. That baby lamb is born again because it's been restored to who it was initially created to be. That's what being born again is. He's initially restored to who it's been created to be. Here's the best part of all. When the shepherd comes out to the flock, whether they take them into the field, whether they bring them back to the pen, whether they put oil on their head to feed them, to give them water. When the shepherd calls for the sheep, here's the most awesome thing. The very first sheep that run to the shepherd are the bummer sheep. Do you know why? They recognize the voice of the one who healed them, of the one who restored them, who got their heart right, who forgave them, literally, who put them right back in the place that they were created and put on this earth to be. They remember the one who healed their life. Well, here's the reality. You know, so many times in the church, there's believers and Christians that say, oh, I'm okay, when really they're not okay. They're struggling. They're hurting. They don't have everything right. I'm not perfect. I could be the first one to look in the mirror. That's why I tell people all the time, Michael Jackson's greatest song he ever sang is I'm looking at the man in the mirror. 
Because the reality is I got to deal with myself before I look at anybody else. That's why Jesus even said, before you're ready to pull the splinter out of your brother's eye, how about taking the plank out of your own eye? And the Holy Spirit is the only one who can help me do that. Well, the reality is number two, we always sometimes have this mindset that somebody has it better than me or doing better than I'm doing. And here's the reality. It comes down to this very simple thing. Every single one of us have individual fingerprints, footprints, DNA, because we were created in the image of God the Father for a purpose and a destiny. You've heard me share this. I have it on my wristbands that say VIP. You matter, VIP, value, identity, purpose. I have value because God says I have value. He created me with that value. I have the identity that he created me with, and I have the purpose that he created me with. The key is discovering that and finding that. But here's the sad reality. Most people, no matter what group I speak to, church group or non-Christian groups, which I do a lot of educational groups, I am flocked by my audience constantly telling me, thank you, I thought it was my fault, that I did something wrong, that my parents split up, or I was abused. Well, my dad's an alcoholic. My mother's a drug addict. My dad's in prison. I don't even know my mother. I don't even know my father. And the reality is if those things, even from childhood and our young adulthood, are not truly healed, then what happens is we run to the wrong stuff. And even us as believers, God's desire is to continually renew himself within us. He's living in us, but to give us that freshness, to give us that healing to restore our soul, to renew our mind, to continually heal our broken heart, to transform our lives, to forgive us. Here's the reality. When we take communion, we're doing this in remembrance of what Christ did. Well, what did he do? He did not only forgive me of my sins, his blood was shed in seven different ways. When Jesus was stabbed with a spear, mm -hmm. the first thing that flowed from his physical heart as a replication of your soul, was blood and water, which was separated. His heart was already broken. He had to be broken to deal with our brokenness. Remember this, the depth of Jesus' suffering had to measure the depth of our sin, our brokenness, our fear, our sickness, our disease. He went to the cross to cover all these things, no matter what we battle and face. And I want to just throw this out, you know? The reality is God treasures us and he loves us dearly. And you guys know my testimony, where you matter, came from. I think you do it. If you don't know, share it quickly. I had tragically lost my wife 34 years ago while asleep in bed and a drunk driver crashed to my house, killed her and changed my life forever. God helped me through that. I remember the first night I'm laying in a hospital bed and I prayed this prayer and I share this with people all the time because I hear the most amazing sermons and messages preached. But if I do not come back when I preach a sermon and message to say, Bill, Brian, Trace, everybody out there, you can't do anything I share of the Spirit apart from the Holy Spirit. My flesh will never love. My flesh will never forgive. My flesh will never be kind. My flesh will never be generous. My flesh will never build up and exhort others. My flesh is about one thing, serving me. Me, 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 me. What have you done for me lately? The spirit is about serving others. That's why Jesus even said, I've come to serve, not to be served. Well, the kids at the high school rallied around me. They came to the funeral, to the cemetery, to the hospital, and constantly showed me how much I mattered. And the reality was that, is to know that I mattered to God, that you matter to God, that we were treasured by God. Well, the night I'm in the hospital bed, I'm praying. I said, Father, there's no way I could forgive this man apart from you. I need your strength and help and your Holy Spirit to help me forgive a man because your word tells me to forgive him. So, fellas, I wanted to open up and share this and to say to every one of you, take a moment. And whether you write it down, and I want you to give me a little feedback here in your own life. Maybe what needs to be done, what can be done. How can you and I and all of us have more of that intimacy and more of that relationship with God, where it extends more than programs. When we go to church, church is awesome. We need to be there gathering. But sometimes we become so locked into programs and protocol when God wants to move in a special way, in a mighty way. And I'm not saying there's not some crazy stuff sometimes that, you know, we got to be careful of. But the Spirit of God wants to bring healing to the hurting of this world. 
and it starts with you and me. And God loves and adores us. So I want you guys to think about that, fellas, and just take a moment, give you a little break here for a few minutes, and give you some of that time to maybe jot down a few things of what you see in your own life and what works for you because what works for Bobby Petroselli to find that intimacy with God because of my own uniqueness may not be the same as somebody else. It may come under the same banner of things we may try to do, but everybody may have a different thing that they can do to find that stillness time, that quiet time, to hear the voice of God. Then when I read his word or I read a Christian book or I hear a sermon or I'm part of a Bible study, man, that makes so much more sense I already have that relationship with God and I truly have that true relationship with God. I'm willing to talk to him about everything. Be frank, share my heart, pour my heart out. So fellas, if you can take a moment, is that good Bill for them to take a moment right now and do that? Are you there Bill? Yes, um, Chris can coordinate that. We have a small group set up and he can go ahead and move us into the small groups uh, to be able to to talk about uh, that particular topic, share with each other for about five minutes. Oh, okay, for about five minutes, we're good? Is that good? Is that good for you? Yeah, that's perfect, Bill. That'll be great. I mean, Bill, then we can come back and have people discuss this. There's a few other things I want to bring out, but I want to lay right. groundwork. That's awesome, Bill. Thank you. Great. Okay, guys, stand by while Chris works his magic. <laughs> I was not ready for that, Bill, but I'm uh, I'm in process. So, sorry, Chris. That's all good, man. That's all good. I know when Bill and they reached out to me, said you can take a little break at any time. I just want to be sensitive. That's all. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. All right, Chris. Thank you. We are in process here. Awesome. Hang tight. I like for people to know where we go. Let's see. Oh uh, man. All right. Many of you are on the way. I'm getting better at this, believe it or not, but in order to automatically do this, you have to be logged in through your Zoom account. And I think everybody's clicking the link, which is fine. But let's see. John Piper, you are. John Piper. With Bill Sanders. Okay. You're on the way. All right, we're getting close. Rick is at Bivens also. All right, I got a couple I got to ask. Alan, whose table are you? Uh, Jeff, I'm Jeff. Okay. Brad. I think Brad's at my table too. Bobby, I'll start the ticker. I have a timer I can do uh, once everyone's in. Absolutely, I get it. No problem at all. Jim, is that Tim's? Mike Mitchell, you're at Dave Trainer's table? Okay. All right, I just got Jim, Mike's, and Jeff. Which tables are you? Oh, Jeff. Oh, I know what table you are. Your show's up J-E-F. That threw me off. Not Well, I got tired of uh, Jim Whittlesey calling me goof. That's right. <laughs> well, here you go. You're going to Jeff's. 
And Jim Mike's, where are you going? Uh, Casey Fisher. Okay. Yes. 
All right, I got them coming back in a minute. Hey, Bobby, thanks for jumping in last minute, man. That was a, a huge help. Oh, absolutely, Chris. I'm honored, brother. Totally honored. And I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed when you were with us before at Palmacy. I got to be there that Friday. So uh, awesome. Bill, Bill's a big cheerleader of yours. And he said, I I'm talking to Bobby. Let me see. So thank you again. I'm on, absolutely honored. And I'm all part of the team, you know. That's right. That, that's the key at this time, Chris, is that the body works together to bring this accomplishment. You know, Jesus' prayer, may my body be one, Father, as you and I are one, that your glory would be revealed. That prayer he wants answered, and it's time for the body to team up. And I always say this, I may not agree with everything people say or do, Chris, but the in, in the church, but the reality is either you're for the kingdom or you're against it. That's what the word says. You're either on the same team as me or you're not. And if we're on the same team, we don't agree. You look at the Tampa Bay Rays. Everybody comes from different backgrounds, ethnicity, parts of the country, parts of the world, but they're still part of the same team. That's the key. That's right. It looks like everybody's back with us. So don't share any of the secrets I just shared with you, Bobby, and we're back at large group. Awesome. I'm well, joking. listen, everyone, I just appreciate you guys very much. And thank you for doing this. And I want to reiterate something I said earlier and then something I just said to Chris, and then I want to open it up to some of your responses. But think about this again. If there was another way for God to have accomplished what he wanted to accomplish to restore his creation to him to the fullest capacity, he would have never sent his son to have to die. So the point I'm getting at, that was the only way that he could accomplish it because the way things were, it wasn't bringing us to that place or it was a setup to eventually bring his son. Well, then let's go to the next step. When Jesus accomplished what he did on the cross and then, of course, rose from the dead, could you imagine the disciples? They have them for three and a half years. He dies. And all of a sudden, three days later, you know, he dies. Your whole world is in shambles. And then he comes back. And he's with them approximately, it's estimated, 40 days, teaching them, spending more time with them and hanging out with them. And then after that 40 days, he says, okay, fellas, by the way, see ya. I'm leaving physically. I'm out of here. But I am going to send the paracletos, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. So basically, in other words, you cannot exist with me, in me, me being part of you to the fullest extent, apart from the Holy Spirit coming back and helping you to make disciples of all men, reminding you of everything I taught you, showed you, and he's going to empower you to be witnesses throughout the world. So sometimes we don't recognize the full Trinity. There's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are all one. We cannot operate in Christ to the fullest extent that God wants us to apart from the Holy Spirit, get three in one. And I know for a fact that I can't, I can't become close to that, close to the operation. And as I just had shared with Chris before we came back on, remember this word says, you're either for the kingdom or against it because there were people doing things in this Bobby, of the Did everybody's audio just change? Oh. Something happened with your audio. What happened to me? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it changed. changed. Yeah, it changed. Speak again, okay. see if it's going back. What's the last thing you guys? There you go. You're back. You're back. Sorry. You're back. Not a problem. What? So we just lost him for a few moments, uh, Bill. Okay, no problem. But here's the thing: as I shared with Chris right before we all got back together, and then I want to open it up to you guys, and that is this: you know, there were men in the streets and even women in the streets performing certain miracles and things of God. And the disciples, the disciples asked Jesus, you know, what about them? And Jesus said to the disciples, either they're for the kingdom or they're against it. So I've come to this very simple, um, I've come to this very simple understanding. And that is that all of us who call ourselves Christians and have at least the faith as a grain of mustard seed and open up our heart to Christ, we're all on the same team. We may not 
come in full agreement about all things. But you know what? As I shared with Chris quickly, we have to remember we're on the same team. We're part of the body of Christ. We're sons of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the cool reality is this. We're here where Jesus said we're part of his body. We're part of his kingdom. And his simple prayer to the Father is, may my body be one as you and I are one that your glory would be revealed. Here's the simplicity, fellas. God calls us to come together more than ever in the kingdom. And every one of us has something amazing to bring to the kingdom. So, Bill, I want to throw it out to the guys, and I want to get a little feedback from them, because there's not one way of doing something. There's not one way of being still and knowing that I'm the Lord, of hearing the voice of God, or embracing all the things of the kingdom. And I want to get a feedback from the fellas of what do they do, or what are some of their practices or things they do to walk out their walk with God and to have that true relationship with God and to operate in that relationship and allow the spirit of God alive in them to help them, to lead them, to guide and direct them. So I want to throw that out to them, Bill. I'd love to get some feedback from anyone who would like to share their heart for a moment and give any, everybody a chance because it's about all of us. It's not about me. It's about we, we all matter to God. Thanks, Bobby. I mean, as an intro, I'll just say a quick comment, and that is, um, you know, the first thing that came to mind is um, all the noise out there in respect to the pandemic and the election. I mean, they're the two hot topics. Um, I have uh, uh, mm. men in my family that have pretty much gone on, on, on a hiatus off of Facebook because of just how obnoxious people have gotten, passionate and rude and all the other, uh, you know, things that, so that's what comes to mind to me. I mean, because when you're distracted with that kind of nonsense, you can't focus on your faith and your heart and the direction of where you're headed. So that's the first thing that comes to mind for me, Bobby. And a great point of that, Bill, is mm -hmm. when we become distracted and we let fear and panic and chaos get in the way, okay, then what we're doing is we're operating in the flesh. And the right. spirit and the flesh can operate at the same time in our life. We, we all go through those things. And my encouragement to everyone, as you just made it so clear, Bill, is when those things get in the way, yeah, I'm not going to be in the spirit. And they're going to distract me and get me off target, or as the expression is, off kilter, whatever the right words are, of what God has for me. Great word. That's awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, I think it's how you start your day. My wife and I start each morning with uh, her great coffee and uh, Oswald Chambers' daily devotional. And we read the entire chapter of the Bible that it'll have a verse, and then you read the entire chapter of that verse, uh, which we call putting big rocks in the jar first. And personally, uh, I like to walk distances on Bayshore, and I always put earbuds in of a little uh, music thing so I can listen to rock and roll. But most of the time, I never turn the music on. I'm just out there with the earbuds, quiet. I don't hear cars or anything. And uh, it's very calming, and one can communicate with God and think. That's awesome, Dennis. Thank you for sharing that because once again, not everybody may do it that way, but that's phenomenal to see just the simplicity of how you do it. And that's why I wanted to just stir this up a little to hear what other men do, because once again, whatever works for you that keeps you in that spirit realm, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's awesome. Thank you, Dennis. Somebody else. I don't know if I, uh, it's Matt McKinney, I don't know if I, I misheard the question, but it was about, uh, could you repeat it real quick, just the question itself, Bobby? Like, like, what does, when we use the word relationship with God, like Dennis had just shared what he does, what Bill does, to, to have that relationship, and once again, did you say your name was Matt? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Matt, there's not, what I'm getting at is there's not one way of doing it. So like to me, maybe I lay on the floor and that's what I do. I go sit in the closet or I sit in my car, put, you know, whatever works. So that's why I wanted to get a feedback of everybody else. What are simple things that we learn from one another that maybe works for you 
that you could find that relationship and that stillness time with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm similar to probably Dennis. I do a couple of devotions in the morning and then I, uh, I journal and I pray. Uh, and then I read a, a, a chapter in the Bible. So that's morning kind of routine. Uh, but oh, if I, I just mentioned in my small group, if I'm off that routine, I feel that I'm off that routine. I feel that I'm not in the spirit. I feel that God isn't with me if, I, if I'm not actually in the, even though he is, I, I feel like he's not if I'm not doing my process that I do each day. So, um, and you know, what's awesome that you just said what you said, Matt, which I love. Because think about this just for a moment, Matt. When there have been certain routines that we've allowed ourselves to get into, as I like to use the phrase, practice his presence. And that's what keeps us going. You know as well as I do, Matt, I'm looking in the mirror now and I'm pointing at myself and I'm saying anything to anybody else. You know, when we get away from some of those things that have worked, that's when we get ourselves in trouble or we get away from God, even in a little way, or we're more tempted or we have a greater chance of sinning or whatever the right words are. So that's great. I'm loving what everybody shares so far. Thank you, fellas. Awesome. Who's next? Somebody else. Yeah, with bookends, I just I call my day bookends. Um, I also have termed it before I pee, because <laughs> I, I realize that if I let the body just naturally do what the body does, it's gonna do what the body does, and it's gonna crave what the body wants. So therefore, before I pee, I say thank you, Lord, take care of me today, help me out, and then that's my start of the bookend. Now I can go pee and do whatever I want to do. And I want to come off of what Matt said, what Bill said, what everybody said, and it's this. So now when politics or some nonsense or somebody cuts me off in the road, I'm rooted in the start of my day. So therefore now I can just stand. I got to stand though. I love uh, the walking on Bayshore. I don't, I need to quiet myself real quick, real quick so that I don't react and I can respond. And then before I go to bed, I put the other book in in and I say, thank you, Father. I sit, I start on the edge of the bed. I end on the edge of the bed. I say, thank you, Father, for bringing me through this day. I hope that I've brought pleasure to you. Re help me to rest. I love you. And then I pass out. And then I repeat the next day. See, you know what's awesome about that real quick for, all, for everything you're sharing, Brian, everybody else is phenomenal. I love this because we're getting the input of all. You know, what works for you is important, however you're able to do that. Hear this real quick. One of the greatest examples of what you just even said, Brian, and what's been shared is when you look at Peter and you look at either Matthew or Mark, okay? And Peter comes to Jesus and says, thou art Christ, the son of the most high. What does Jesus say to him? Jesus comes back and says, the only way you can say that is by the Holy Spirit. So watch this. Peter's glowing. So you ready? He's glowing. He's all happy. He's all excited. Next breath, Jesus starts talking about I'm and I'm paraphrasing. I'm basically going to be crucified. My life is going to be touched. And Peter's talking about, no, we're going to be here for you. And what did Jesus say? Get thee behind me, Satan. Because at that moment, Peter went into the flesh. That's why I say to people, that's why the grounded part for all of us, that's why I love what every one of you are sharing. When I'm more grounded, there's less of a chance of me going into the flesh. And even as Matt said, when I get out of that pattern or that habit or that routine, there's a greater chance for me, and not that Jesus is condemning me, but get me behind me because you're going down the wrong path. Awesome. All of you. Awesome. Somebody else. We have maybe time for a couple more. I got one. Uh, Pre-pandemic, my uh, routine driving to work every day, um, there was the movie, uh, I Can Only Imagine. The yeah, theme, absolutely. The theme song to that, that was the song I listened to in the car on my way to work every day, and it just kind of put me in the right frame of mind. Still, still kind of redefining what, listening to it in my house just wasn't the same. There was a peacefulness in the car, um, so redefining that now. But um, that was listening to that every morning, just started the day off, got my head in the right frame of mind, and off I went. Now, what I love what you just said, Mike, Oh, everything. But I love what you just said. Now that I'm in the house, I have to still come under that banner of how could I redefine what that looks like? Because for me, that was such a part of my routine and being still and knowing God and that worked for me. How could I find a new way? That's everybody with everybody sharing is so awesome because it just shows when we get out of that stillness time, that quiet time, whatever works for us time and God in our relationship, 
then we got to find a way to get back to it because all of a sudden then we're going to go down the road path. Awesome, Mike. Somebody else. Hello, Bobby. Yes. Can you hear me? Is that Jimmy? Whoa. Yes. Hey, brother. I don't see you. I hear you, though. Hey, you don't want to see me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Um, let me see. All right. No, that's okay, Jimmy. It's not a problem. Right. Anyway. Um, you got more hair than I do Jimmy, every day. Got, and, Jimmy, you uh, got more hair than me. Throw me some. Right. Give me it's, some of that hair. Uh, as you said earlier, we're all members of the Christ of uh, the body, and we all don't do things exactly or believe the same way. But I feel very strongly. I pray my heavenly prayer language every morning. Amen. Because, uh, you know, even Paul said, I, I'm happy that I pray in the spirit more than all of you combined. So um, I think it's the best way for the Holy Spirit to intercede for us with the Father and to pray his perfect will in the life in our life and to edify ourselves uh, to begin the day. So that's, that's part of my routine every day is praying in the spirit. Amen. And I received that and I do the same. And everybody, once again, everybody has different ways. That's what I love. Just hearing everybody share what works for them. I love that because once again, it's showing the part of the body, the difference in personalities and the difference in what works for each person to have that intimacy, that relationship, true relationship with God. Maybe we have time for like one or two more quickly, if that's I okay. Anybody? Hi. I'm really enjoying this, Bobby. Thank uh, you, Jim. It, with navigators, what, what, what I've learned is that in doing scripture memory, we have God's word available to us at all times. When I can't in heart, sleep, that word if I hit in my heart, excellent. Exactly. And, and when I can't sleep at night, if I'm, uh, for whatever reason, I'll start going through my Bible verses and, and God just calms my heart. Uh, and, uh, certainly, uh, it just helps power me through the day also. But I was thinking of Dennis going along Bayshore and uh, one of my good friends was George Gage, who uh, passed away uh, this past year because of a, a crazy drunk driver. And he was on Bayshore at the time. And what that made me, and, and I know George is with Jesus right now, but uh, it made me think of how am I going to use every day? Because I don't know when God's going to take me. He knows the time I'm going to go and be with him. But uh, George didn't know that it was going to be that day. And uh, uh, none of us do. So uh, we don't want to waste it. And, and our, our first obligation is to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind. And, and that's the first and greatest commandment. That's my Amen. Opinion. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Awesome. Very awesome. And, you know, I'm going to begin to wrap this up, and I thank everybody for sharing. And those, you know, I know you're going to go back into your own group here in a moment, and maybe share a little more, but I appreciate all of that. And let me, I want to close out in a moment to say, remember, life does not happen one day at a time. Just like you had just shared, Jeff, his life was taken in one moment. Life happens one moment at a time. That's what happened to me. It happens to all of us. And all I can say to you guys is the more moments I have in a day when I'm in his presence or in his spirit, the better my day is going to be. That's what I've seen for myself. The more I'm able to do that, the more I'm able to access and activate him inside of me. And whether it's reading his word, listening to music, and we've heard such great diversity of what people do, which is so awesome. So before I close in prayer over every one of you, and then I know you're gonna go back to your group, I wanna mention this because Bill, thank you for the kind words you said in the beginning. Thank you for all of your kind words, for allowing me to be part of this. I enjoy it, never hesitate to allow me to be part of this. Or if you ever need somebody to come and minister in the church or whatever, please know that. But he mentioned my book, You Matter, It Doesn't. I also have wristbands and I have my other book, 10 Seconds. Um, just so you know, if you want to get any of that, you can go to my website, bobbypetroselli.com. Make whatever donation you want. It's just about a donation, but I want to let you know quickly, for 14 years, you might have heard of him. His name is James Robinson, based out of Dallas, Texas, Life Outreach. 
And what I do with the money is after we pay for those expenses, I take and I help support one part of his ministry, and that's rescuing kids for the last 14 years sold into human and sex trafficking. I'm so glad that our society is gaining understanding of that because it's been going on for a long time. And James Robinson was one of the first to, when I say expose me to it, make me so much more aware of it, like I said, more than a decade ago. So I'm glad people are doing that, but that's where the funds will go. And I just want to let you know. So Bill, if it's okay, I'm going to close my portion and pray over everybody right now, if that's okay, buddy. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you so much, Bobby, for being here. We, we really Absolutely. appreciate it. We'd like to get you on some type of a rotation, maybe once a quarter, once at least, quarter. if you can, you can swing it in. I would in. love to, brother. No, you just let me know. Thanks. So let me just say a closing prayer. Father, the simple prayer I have for all my brothers is this. You know what needs to be done in their life. You know what they're battling with. You know what their mindset is. You know their heart. You know their families, their jobs, their situations. Thanks a lot, Bobby. Bobby, we lost your audio. We've got to all make sure that we're muted when we are uh, uh, have the speaker on. Yeah, there's there's something going on with your audio again, Bobby. But thank you so much, um, Chris. Are you gonna are you gonna back into small group, uh, Chris? I am. Tim, did you uh, have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank everybody. We had great attendance today. Uh, I just wanted to see if there are any more prayer requests from anybody out there um, who's on today or for, or for somebody else who's not here with us today. So Tim, I, this is I just want to say thank you for all your prayers for me and uh, the situation I'm going through, and I'm really feeling good right now. Thank you so much. Good. Go ahead, Big D. So basically the McCarthy family, so my wife's family, last week, Saturday after our call, I'm sorry, Friday after our call last week, her uncle passed away from multiple cancers. It was sudden. And then we got the word from her aunt to go ahead and release it Sunday. So therefore the services are tomorrow up in New Hampshire. So if you guys can be in prayer for the McCarthy family, but yet let's just add all people who have suffered any loss this week, this month, this season, and that they be given the courage, the strength, the comfort to endure, to walk through. But yet, like we learned today, that they get intimate with the God that created them. Thanks, Tim. Hey, uh, hey Jim Hess. Can Jim Hess, uh, we don't know what's going on with Jim Hess. Um, I had a a colon problem, and we finally got it resolved. It's Crohn's disease. And they've got me back on uh, steroids like it should have been months ago. I've had, I've lost quite a bit of weight. Well, good grief, Jim. Uh, uh, for everybody, you're probably not aware, but Jim is a neighbor of ours in Tampa. And when I heard he's, yeah. uh, we need to pray for him, I'm wondering what's going on. Well, Jim, we'll keep yeah. you in our prayers, man. I continue that, you know, we're, uh, we're on a good road to recovery now, and I like to say, after uh, some new medication I'm on, I'm on and I'm beginning to feel a lot better. That's good to hear. Thank you, sir. Tell Joyce we, tell Joyce we said hi. Will do. Same to Marcia. You bet. 
Okay, I'll, uh, unless we got one more, I'm going to wrap things up here with a quick prayer just uh, of those who uh, we want to pray for. Yes. Dan, this is, this is Casey over at Ottawa. We're, uh, we're, we're making lunches for a lot of the high school kids today, I mean teachers today. We have a, a lady of, of our church that her name is Tracy. She had a massive heart attack. She's in the hospital. They, they, it doesn't look very promising, but her name is Tra Tracy, 40 years old with two kids. So just keep her in your prayers, guys. Whoa. Very, very wow. sad. Okay. They, they, did, they freeze the body and just wait to see what's going to happen and stuff like that. So. Wow. Keep her, okay. Please keep her in your prayer, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. You're Thank welcome. you for volunteering over there at Ottawa, too. All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, so we, if, in case we want to break out into our own groups afterwards, uh, let me just say thank you, God, for all of us to be together today and to hear the great words of Bobby Percelli per, um, and, Petr, uh, and that it, they inspire us each and every day to be a better Christians, to better followers of you, to better communicate with you. God, we ask special prayers for the uh, McCarthy family uh, and the loss of their uncle, and God, all people who've uh, recently lost a loved one. And also, uh, God, that uh, we, um, uh, this wasn't a prayer out there, but Matt Massini and his wife, who's now pregnant of uh, 21 weeks, that she have a good, healthy pregnancy and deliver a, a healthy boy. Uh, and that uh, Tracy, who uh, at 45 years old, had a heart attack and has two children. God, that you bless that family and, and, and heal her and heal the family and that they all come together. Um, and um, I'm sorry if I've lost uh, anybody else out. I apologize, but that's my notes for today. All right, Chris, we're going to break out into groups one more time. Can you do that quickly? Here? Yep. Hi. Hi. Ah, there he is. Nash wanted to say hey. Hello, Nash. Welcome. Yes, I will break everyone into rooms. Uh, bear with me again. I'm trying to automate it, but unless you actually log in through your Zoom account, I've got to manually add you. So hang tight. I hope you all have a great weekend. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris.